Okay then gang, so in this series you're going to learn how to create this budgeting application using React and React Router DOM, which comes with a bunch of new features that hopefully you're going to learn all about as well. Now to teach you this, I'm going to hand you over to Chris from Coding in Public. He's an awesome teacher, also here on YouTube. He's got his own YouTube channel called Coding in Public. I'm going to leave the link to that down below. I would definitely implore you to go and subscribe because he's got some really, really good videos. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Chris. Enjoy. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and a huge thanks to Sean for having me on the channel again. I'm really excited to share this React Router project with you. Here's the finished project if you want to play around with it on my website. You'll see here that I can create some budgets. I just have to provide a name and an amount. I can then add expenses and uh, I can select which budget I want the expense to go to. And then I can also delete expenses down below. Now we can do all this and more and we're going to build this whole thing out from scratch together in this series. Now, just a quick note, we'll be building on Sean's recent series on React Router 6.4 and extending it to show off a few more new features in React Router 6.4 and above. In fact, we'll be using 6.8 in this series. Now, these newer versions of React Router take an old school web concept and modernize it behind the scenes with a few simple and clever touches. While surprisingly simple, the new features also change the way you write React code. It's really a, a paradigm shift, but it's totally worth it. Now, perhaps a brief overview will help pique your interest. Here's the opening splash page for the app that we'll build. Now, if you're familiar with React, you may assume I'm manually storing state for my name, and that when I create my account, it passes that state down to whatever components show next. But there's actually something more simple and more complex going on. When I click Submit, React Router actually submits the form to the page like a standard HTML form, as simple as it gets. That means I get a submit request and everything sent to this route with the form data naturally included like a normal HTML form submission. Now I track that submission and take the form data in as a parameter and then save it to my database, in this case, just local storage. All of this takes place in a simple action function I pass to React Router. I don't have to manually track state or do a bunch of prop drilling. React Router handles all the complexity for me behind the scenes. Now, how does this newer functionality in React Router show my data in different routes? Well, here's where another new concept comes in, loaders. I can tell React Router to run a different function every time a route loads. And in that function, I'll fetch all the data I need to display in the route. Pass down that loader data to the component and I can map over it and show it on the page. Now, here's the real clever bit. When I create a new budget, I don't have to write a use effect hook or manually take any action. As soon as the form submits to the given route, React Router runs my loader function automatically and updates the DOM for me. This means with a few simple forms, you can manage a ton of complex state and ensure your backend and front end stay in sync. So many of our apps these days are pulling from the same data set in all kinds of routes and components. Now, normally you'd have to manually pass along that state, create context or call custom hooks or write use effects to keep everything kind of up in the air and working. But React Router just handles it all. You can use the same data in multiple components and your UI will just keep up to date as your data changes without a bunch of micro touches on your end. And what's more, I get some extra superpowers. For instance, React Router gives me access to the current state of my form submission. So here, when I'm waiting on my database, it can reflect that status in the UI for my users, like by changing the button text and disabling the button. We'll also use a newer form available on something React Router calls a fetcher. This will, among other things, allow handling multiple form submissions at once, like deleting a bunch of expenses quickly. Even if those writes or reads happen out of sync, it does all the heavy lifting for you. Now, before we jump in, let me list a few assumptions. I'm assuming that you have a recent version of Node.js on your machine, which you can get from nodejs.org. I'm also assuming that you have a good understanding of HTML, JavaScript, and React. And finally, I'm assuming that you have a basic understanding of what React Router does, and maybe that you've worked with it before. This tutorial is meant to serve as practice for working with React Router and React and not as an introduction to it. Now, one more note, you may notice that I've left off talking about CSS and that's because we're mostly going to ignore it in this series. I'll have you copy a global CSS style sheet at the beginning of the course, but so that we can focus on React Router, I won't be returning to CSS so that this series isn't four months long. All right, we'll add classes, a few custom variables here and there throughout the project to get a bunch of custom styling as you can see, but that's about it. 
If you're interested in how I write CSS, feel free to check out my channel, Coding in Public, where I regularly write CSS and projects, uh, live streams, tutorials, etc. Now, in this final part of the video, we'll set up the basics of this project together and copy in all the images and the CSS that we need. You can find everything you need for this stage below in the Lesson 1 branch of the project. And by the way, each lesson has a corresponding branch with the finished code, so you can grab any code you miss or compare your code to mine if you get stuck. If you'd rather skip this setup and jump straight into writing React, feel free to skip to the next lesson. You'll just need to grab the code from the Lesson 1 branch, download and unzip it, and then open it in your favorite code editor. From there, open a local terminal and run npm install to install all of the dependencies, and then finally run npm run dev to get the dev server up and running. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Now, I find many people prefer to start from absolute scratch and install everything themselves. So if that's you, you've stuck around for good reason because that's what we're gonna do right now. When we're done, our code should look just like the code in lesson one, which other people may have downloaded already and skipped ahead to the next lesson four. And you'll need that branch open too, as we'll be copying images and CSS from the actual code in that branch. Okay, you ready? Let's jump in. All right, so I've got my terminal of choice open. That would be warp. And I'm gonna go ahead and install this project. We are going to use Vite to get going with this. So I'll type npm create Vite at latest. And you can see I'm getting an autocomplete there for a React Router budget app. We'll just call this like React Router budget. How about that? All right, you can call it whatever you want, but that's what I'll call it here. Now I just wanna select React. I'll go ahead and select SWC. It's not a huge deal for a project this small, but it's basically a new plugin that uses ES Build behind the scenes instead. So that's what I'm gonna do because technically it's a little bit faster. All right, next I'm gonna CD into React Router Budget right here. And so now I'm inside of this in my terminal. Let's go ahead and install one other thing and that would be React Router DOM. So I'll say npm install, and then I want React Router DOM. And in this case, I wanna make sure that I have 6.8 because that's what I'm gonna be using in this tutorial series. So you may wanna install that exact version as well. Um, but just so you know, in the future, things could have changed if you're watching this later on in the future. So if you wanna follow along exactly with what I'm doing here, I'd recommend installing 6.8. Okay, so everything is installed. Now I just simply need to open this up in my code editor. The quickest way to do that is you can just do code and dot. That should actually use VS Code to open it up. And that's what I'm using. So that's what I'll do. Now on Mac, you actually have to set this up. So it's no big deal if you need to go to the folder, right click it and just click open with VS Code. That works as well. All right, I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've got VS Code up on the left. I've got Chrome open up on the right. We're gonna do a couple things, mostly taking things out and then we'll put a few things in. So the first thing I wanna do is open up the SRC folder. We're just gonna get rid of this app CSS. We're not gonna need that. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And then inside here, I need to basically get rid of pretty much everything. So all this stuff up here, we'll get rid of. I'll get rid of this use state. We don't need that anymore. And then I'm simply gonna return just the div with the class name of app. So I can get rid of all the rest of this and yours should look something just like this. All right, so return div class of app, that's it. Now, let me jump over here to the main. This one we shouldn't need to do anything for. We're gonna actually change around what's in here, but the rest of this should work. I do need to change around some stuff in my index.html file. So I'm gonna come in here, we're gonna change this. We'll just call this like budget app. And then here, I don't want this to point to a Vite SVG. I'm gonna actually point this to my own favicon SVG, which we'll copy in in just a second. In fact, maybe let's just do that now. So inside of my public right here, I'm gonna grab this and I should be able to come over here. Let's see, copy raw contents, there we go. So let's come over to the public. I'll just go ahead and change this to say favicon.svg and then I'll paste this in. We should have just two more things to do. And the first thing is I wanna update this index.css file with my own custom CSS. So if I go back to kind of the root of lesson one, which by the way, you need to make sure you're on lesson one here. Then what I can do is open up SRC. I'll jump inside the index.css and I'll go ahead and copy this right here, copy raw contents. Once again, I'll just paste this in and this should contain all the CSS we need for the entire project. Now. Just a note here that I did write this for the tutorial. It's really not meant to expand to a larger site. So there's several things I wouldn't do if I was doing it a bigger site, but to kind of minimize the amount of times you're writing classes and things like that, I've kind of optimized it for the tutorial. You're welcome to look through this. And uh, I think at one point in the tutorial, I'll briefly kind of talk you through a couple things in here, but mostly we're just gonna leave this alone and style stuff just by adding classes and kind of letting the CSS do its thing. Now, the last thing we need to do is copy in some images. So if I come inside the SRC, we should have some assets here. And all you wanna do is download all of these and add them over here to your assets folder. 
You can also delete this react.svg. We won't need that anymore. So let me go ahead and add them in here. I'll be right back with you. All right, so there we are. We've got all three of these inside of here. You can see I've got a logo mark, I've got a wave, and I've got an illustration. So those are the three Im images we'll be using throughout the site. The rest of it will just be done with CSS, our HTML, well, JSX, and uh, the rest of the code that we write. Okay, so you should be up and running and ready to go. Now, just to make sure this is working properly, I'll open up my local terminal, which you can do with like Command J, or you can also do Command, or let's see, Control tilde as well. And I'll type npm run dev. And there we go, this should get it up and running. I'll Command click on this. And here's my budget app. You see, it's got my right title, it's got my right favicon, and there shouldn't be anything in here. But if I came over here and added something, now you should see it show up. Okay, so we've got it all up and running. Let's go ahead and jump into the next video where we'll talk through the basics of creating a browser router with React Router. I'm really excited about this tutorial. I hope it'll be a huge help to you and that it's really fun as well. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up, and I really hope you enjoy this series, and please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. That really helps a lot and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.